DeSoto and the DeSoto Plymouth dealers from coast to coast present Groucho Marx. In You Bet Your Life. Here he is, the one, the only... Thank you, folks. Thank you. Shucks. <laughs> well, here I am again with a chance for each of our couples to win up to $10,000. And if any of them say the secret word, they'll win an extra hundred smackovers. And this is the word right here. I'll introduce our first couple to Groucho right after we hear this message of importance from our sponsor. Today, mothers are happier, are younger. They give just a little more special care to their families and enjoy thinking of special ways to please them. That's why they use the in ingredient for modern cooking, pet evaporated milk, with more than double the cream of ordinary milk. Pet milk is in for that delicious casserole, in for a whole new flavor in smothered chicken. Pet milk is in with delicious desserts that give these little benefits. So rich, so modern, with more than double the cream of ordinary milk. Pet milk is in with today's cooking. Do you know Duncan Hines' brother? Uh, no, I don't. Who's Duncan Hines' brother? You do know who it is. <laughs> you told me last week. Who is it? I've forgotten. <laughs> well, it's Dunkin' Donuts. Oh, I know why I've Now, forgotten. you see, they like... <laughs> How do you keep your trousers so shiny? <laughs> Groucho, uh, Cornelia Hendricks and Romaine Fielding are waiting to talk to you, so fortune in, please, and meet Groucho Marx. Welcome to You Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you always have with you. Cornelia Hendricks and Romaine Fielding. You're Cornelia. Huh? I'm Cornelia, yes, Groucho. Are you married? Yes. You have five children, huh? No, no, only two daughters. You're 28 years old? No, I'm, I'm 47. Well, I'll try once more. Are you from Philadelphia? No, I was born in Chimahi, Java. You were born where? Chimahi. That means not water in Malay. Did you come right to California from... Uh, oh, no, Groucho. We were repatriated bank? to Holland. You what? We were repatriated to Holland. Oh, you went to Holland, then? Eh? Yes. Well, where mm -hmm. did you live in Holland? In Limburg. Isn't that where the Limburger cheese comes from? Yes, it's made there, but they don't eat it there. They export it to Holland. Well, where do they eat it? America. Uh, they, what happens to the Limburger? They send it to America? Yes. Well, that's America for you. Give them 36 months to pay and they'll buy anything. <laughs> now, your name is Romaine Fielding, huh? That's right, Gretchen. That, that's you. That's right. I've been trying to think where I've heard that name, Romaine Fielding. <coughs> Was he a big movie star about 40 years ago? Oh, that's right, Groucho. Actually, he was a contemporary of Francis X. Bushman in the old silent days. Oh. Well, since you have his name, are you following in his footsteps? Uh, are you in show business? No, I have no particular talent for acting, Groucho. Don't you have uh, any talent? Can you sing or dance or tell jokes? Can well, you, Can well, you stand on your head? No, the only thing when I was uh, in the service, I used to be able to do the manual of arms forward and backward verbatim. Uh, well, I doubt if you can get much of a spectacular with that kind of an act. <laughs> Well, that's what I thought, too, but we had one interesting experience when uh, I was apprentice seaman in the Navy down in Guantanamo Bay, Cuba. Uh, we were lined up, all the apprentice seamen were lined up for inspection. So along came uh, the Secretary of the Navy, which was then Mr. Knox, uh, Admiral King, who was then uh, Admiral of the Fleet, and the commanding officer of the vessel. And about this time, this lieutenant says to me, uh, Sailor, step out here. You know so much about this, you don't well, have what, to... Were you a common sailor? I was a real common sailor. A god. Oh, I was the most gobby. Yeah. So anyway, he throws the piece at me and... Stand attention. He said, describe the position of attention. I said, position of attention, heels on the same line as close together as confirmation then permits, feet turn out equally from an angle of 45 degrees, knees straight without stiffness, hips level and drawn back slightly, weight of body resting equally on hips, shoulders squared and falling, thumbs along the seams of the counters, back the hand out, fingers, uh, fingers curled naturally, head right and square to front, chin drawn back slightly, so that's the head and neck is vertical, eyes straight to front, and assuming the position of attention, heels are brought together smartly and audibly, the mind as well as the body must be at attention. I said, would the lieutenant like to have it verbatim backwards? <laughs> He was sort of dumbfounded. He said, yes. I said, attention at B must body be as well as mind be. The mind as well as the body must be at attention. Front two straight eyes. Eyes straight two front. I like it better this way. <laughs>
Well, let's play you bet your life and see if you can win some money, huh? You selected a dictionary quiz. I'll give you the words. You give me the meanings. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. Uh, what is a limpet? L-I-M-P-E-T. Hmm? Come on, time's up. It's a... Water yeah. pitcher on, a, on, on a nightstand. A water pitcher on a nightstand? Yeah, lampet. That's what we no, call No, this is a limpet. L-I-M-P-E-T. Oh. Well, it's a shellfish. You should have known that since you were in the Navy. Well, you don't have one wrong. What is a nomad? N-O-M-A-D. Nomad. Uh, it's like yeah. an Arab. When well, a rover. Place place, yeah, yeah. You what don't is, have one right. What is a sampan? Sam oh, that is, it is just a Malayan boat. boat That's small. right. It's a Chinese boat. You yeah. now have two right. What is a vaquero? V-A-Q-U-E-R-O. Mm -hmm. South American horsemen or cowboy. Uh, cowboy, oh. yes. You have three right, get the next one right, and you'll have $1,000. What is a dindle? D-I-R-N-D-L. D-I-R-N-D-L. Uh -huh. It's a skirt or dress. Take the money. Take you the money, boy. Right. Take the money. You $1, win $1. the money. <laughs> now, you won $1,000. You can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to double your money. You may even get a chance at five or even $10,000. So go over there and sit down and think about it, and thanks for being on the show. Thank you very much. Pet. Cook inspired with Pet. Creamy frozen fruit dessert. Easy with Pet evaporated milk. One package frozen fruit. Two-thirds cup of Pet. Whip at low speed. Now, one-third cup powdered sugar. Increase to high speed. Pet whips thick and smooth. Freeze to ice cream richness. Inspired. Inspired. Cook inspired with the milk with twice the country cream. Pet. And nothing is better for baby's formula. Pet. All the whole milk nourishment he needs. Extra vitamin D, pure, so digestible. The best milk to help him grow healthy, happy. Pet evaporated milk. Gacho, I'd like you to meet uh, Jack Mosley. Why? <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's hard to answer. Uh, he has a partner. Her name is, uh, I guess, let me start over again. Groucho, I'd like you to meet uh, Jack Mosley and Why? John... <laughs> oh, just for the heck of it, huh? Hey, watch your language. There are musicians out there. Did you hear him? Did you hear what he said? Uh, would you would you people come in? This is Junko Gordon and Jack Mosley, uh, Groucho Marx. Uh, here. Well, welcome to your Bet Your Life. Say the secret word and divide an extra hundred dollars. It's a common word, something you never see, and it's something you always have with you. Junko Gordon and Jack Mosley, huh? Which one is Junko Gordon? I am. <laughs> what? what kind of a name is Junko? Japanese name. Oh. It means June. Oh. Junko isn't a very dignified name for me to call you, and if I call you June, you won't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> That's the way Jack Parr talks. <laughs> What does your husband call you? Does he have a romantic little pet name that I can call you? Yes, so he Isn't called... that like Jack Paul? <laughs> he called me, uh, Fatty. He called you Fatty? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, why does he call you Fatty? <laughs> to get on the other side? No, that's another joke. Well, I better stick to Junko. Junko sounds like one of my brothers. Apo, Chico, Gummo, Groucho, and Junko. <laughs> hey, what are you laughing at? Well, you have to say, Groucho. Yeah, well, you're not so skinny either, you know. <laughs> you could be a male Junko. <laughs> Gordon isn't a Japanese name, or is it? That's an uh, American name. My husband is oh, American. Oh, your, your husband is an yes. American. Did you meet him in uh, the Far East? Could you, is it a, could you tell us the story of how you met him? Is it an interesting story? Yes, Groucho, it's a very long, long story. 
They're all long stories, Junko. Perhaps the... And the longer you're married, the longer the stories get. <laughs> what sort of work does this Romeo do? They mean impetuous uh, fellow, huh? He... Uh, yellow cab driver. What about you, Jack? Are you married? Yes, I am, Groucho. Mm -hmm. I've married 30 years. Is, uh, would you say yours is a love match? Oh, I'd... Yes, but... Really Does not. your wife have any little pet names for you, like Fatty? Well, she calls me Windbag. <laughs> well, that's not nice. I wouldn't call you a windbag. But then, of course, I don't know you as well as your wife does. <laughs> How did you meet your windbag, uh, your wife, windbag? Well, uh, I answered an ad in a paper in Fort Smith, Arkansas. They wanted a dry cleaner. Then I made a trip to Fort Smith and answered the ad. But mm -hmm. before I got time I got there, somebody's already got the job, so that left me out. You went all the way? Where did you go from? From uh, uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. You traveled from Tulsa to Fort Smith? Yes. To get this job? Sure. Right? Jobs is hard to get in them days. Mm -hmm. Well, what happened after that? Well, uh, uh, this Mr. Darby, which uh, turned uh, was a brother-in-law to my wife now, but uh, he taken a liking to me, and so he invited me home. I, don't, I, I couldn't follow this. Well, a man Mr. named Dobby. Dobby he now yeah. he's just come into the picture. Yeah, he came in. He's a brother-in-law of your wife, to yes. whom you weren't married at the That's time. That's right. Yes. You understand this? Yeah. Uh, no, well, I don't. <laughs> well, well, anyway, since neither of us understand it. Proceed yeah. with this right. cock and bull story. Okay. And he invited me home to meet his sister-in-law, which was Pauline. That started something. You went there to get a job as a yeah. dry cleaner, and you didn't get the job. But this fella immediately took you home to meet his sister-in-law. Right. Mm -hmm. well, why was that? Was he supporting her? He wanted to get rid of her. Well, uh, later on, I found out that was the reason why. <laughs> well, how many times did he have to run that ad before they found a sucker like you? That I don't know. All I know, when I went to Fort Smith, the job wasn't there, so I was left out in the cold. You arrived in Fort Smith empty-handed and left there with a wife. Right? Yeah, I did get something out of the deal. <laughs> You're one of the few fellas I ever heard of who's got, who got taken to the cleaners before he got married. <laughs> Junko, have you picked up any American habits since you've been over here? Yes, uh, In the Groucho. United Snakes? Uh, eating. Yeah, yeah, well, that's fairly evident. <laughs> now, what about you, Windbag? Did I ask you if you had any... <laughs> well, if his wife called from that, I don't know why. I... <laughs> Gives us a nice, friendly relationship. <laughs> I'll just call you Bag, yeah? <laughs> Bag, did I ask you what, your, what is your job? You still what? a dry cleaner? Well, in a way, I am. I have Jack's repair shop in Long Beach. You repair Jack's in Long Beach? <laughs> well, I guess I could repair Jack, yeah. Uh -huh. Do you have any hobbies? I mean, or do you do nothing else but just dry no, clean? I, a strong man. You're a strong man? Yes. What, what do you mean? You've been eating her garlic? <laughs> no, not yet. Well, in what way are you a strong man? Well, I used to be with Ripley, believe it or not. Oh. And I did such stunts as let six men choke me. Drive a 40-penny nail through a two-by-four with one punch of my fist, break three-quarter-inch ropes, pull 14-ton fire trucks with my teeth, and let any six men choke me. Are there six men in the audience that would like to come up and, <laughs> and strangle this chap? Do you still perform any of these feats of strength? Or what I'm getting is, could you do something for us? I yes, I could. I don't want anybody to throttle you up here, but could you do something? Yes, I could. Gotcha. What? I could blow up and bust a brand new automobile inner tube. Well, why would anybody want to blow up an inner tube? I don't know. I just like to blow them up. Is this why your wife calls you a windbag? That's right. What, have you got an inner tube on you? I well, you have yeah. one wrapped around here. No, I no. That's solid. You you say you have one? On I you? have an inner tube with me. Well, could you roll it out here? Yes, I could. Could you get it? Or? Would you like to see him blow? Yes, I'd like to see you. I'd like to see Say, how long does it take to blow that thing up before you start? It'll take anywhere from two to eight minutes. Well, that's a long time. I mean, uh, we haven't got that much time. We've got to get on with the quiz. 
We only have a half hour. Oh. Sure. You know, could you blow up the inner tube and still answer the quiz questions? Well, I don't think so. Dr. Simultaneously? I don't think so. Well, I might, but I, I'd rather have my wife come up here. And your wife? Yeah. Uh, yes, Mrs. Windbag is in the audience? Yes, she's in the audience. What's your wife's name? Pauline. Pauline! Would you mind hopping up here? Pauline. <coughs> Pauline? Come up here. I want you to meet, uh, shake hands with Fatty. No, no, I mean... I mean your husband. Fatty Mosley. You get right here this microphone. What is this? That's air. That's air, huh? Well, she had you ticketed all right. Now, Windbag, is there any danger of this inner tube blowing the audience out of the theater? Well, it's according to where I'm standing here, Groucho. Uh-huh. Stand outside on the corner around San Francisco. <laughs> Now, you, you start blowing, and we'll keep an eye on you during the quiz. And Windbag, if you want to, you can help answer the questions while you're taking a breath. Okay. Are you guys ready? Oh, go ahead, Windbag, blow. Now, you selected cities and small towns of the United States. I'll give you four cities or towns in a particular state, and you identify the state. If you miss two in a row, you're out. If you get four in a row right, you win $1,000. I hear the cities and towns. Winchester, Springfield, Shawneetown, and Rock Island. What is the state? Illinois. <laughs> Illinois is what? <laughs> All right, and what state are these places? Batavia, Ithaca, Albany, and Penn Yan. Albany. Uh, Albany, Ithaca, Batavia, and Penn Yan. Maine. New York. And New York is right. Now, you got two right. Right. <laughs> and what state are Carrington, Bismarck, Beach, and the Pheasant then? <laughs> North Dakota is right. Now, you got three. One more right. You'll have $1,000. I can't take it. <laughs> and what state would you find Columbia, Greenville, Gaffney, and... Walhalla, what is the state you'll find these places? Columbia, Greenville, Gaffney, and Walhalla. Walhalla. Oh, sorry. It's South Carolina. <laughs> you have one wrong. In what state would you find Frostburg, Hagerstown, Annapolis, and Snow Hill? Annapolis, you know where the Naval Academy? Where's the Naval Academy? Well, it's Maryland. Maryland. Yeah, you know, you know after, wrong. Yeah. Well, you I'm know sorry. After, you know after two weeks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's over with now. <laughs> where, over here? Here's the same place. Run for your lives! category. I'm going to give you four more questions because it isn't fair. <laughs> Portland, Kennebunk, Skowhegan, and Augusta. Oh, Maine. That's right. Painesville, Youngstown, Sandusky, and Marion. Maryland. Maryland? Maryland? Think, think before you answer. Ohio. Ohio? You said Ohio, that's right. Now you got two. Now you have two right. Two more. Oh. I'm going to give you Sneedville, Nashville, Knoxville, and Shelbyville. That's Tennessee. That's what? Tennessee. That's right. Now you got three right. Oh, you got, you got, uh, uh, you got three right. One more right, and you'll have $1,000.
Titusville, Newcastle, Oil City, and Carlisle. What state? Think now. <laughs> Titusville, Newcastle, Oil City, and Carlisle. Carlisle. No. Huh? Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania's right. You got well, four that's... in a row. You win one thousand dollars. <laughs> Isn't it romantic when two windbags get together? <laughs> now you've won a thousand dollars so far. Now you can keep it and quit, or else you can come back later and try to for five or even ten thousand dollars. So go over there and sit down and think about it. And thanks for being on the show. Thank you Goodbye. so much. In the old days, you had to shift gears with clumsy controls like this wasn't easy. Later, the gear shift moved up in the world to the steering column. And then automatic transmissions brought complicated dials and levers that were impressive, but sometimes confusing. But now, here's the quickest, smoothest, easiest method of drive selection ever invented. DeSoto's great new push-button driving, a positive mechanical control. To put the car in any driving range, just push a button and go. DeSoto push-button driving is safer, too. It's out of children's reach, and it's designed so you can't make a mistake. Push-button driving is easier and safer. And to see just how fast and smooth it is, watch this professional stunt driver. Now, push-button driving is such an obvious improvement, competing cars will imitate it next year or the year after. But DeSoto has push-button driving now, so why wait? Tomorrow, drive a beautiful new DeSoto with push-button driving. You can enjoy the best this summer. Drive and price a DeSoto tomorrow. Well, Groucho, our, uh, our last couple, Jack Mosley and Junko Gordon, have decided not to try for the big question. But here is our first couple, Mrs. Hendricks and Mr. Fielding, to give us their decision. Now, you've won $1,000 so far. If you decide to try for the big money and you fail, you wind up with a total of $500. What are you going to do? Well, I want to keep what You're I gonna have. You're going to keep your $500. Mm -hmm. And uh, what are you going to do? I'll go, Patrick. You're going to go. All right. Thanks for being on the show, Canada. Now, uh, <laughs> you pick a number. On uh, this side, if you win, it'll be $5,000. And this side, $2,500 because you're single. Now, we're going to give you two chances at the wheel, so think first of a number between one and ten. Six. Six. Now, wait a minute. That's for 5,000. Now, think of another number for 2,500. Uh, two. Okay. Five, six and two. Now, turn the wheel. Neither number came up, so this question is worth $1,000. Pope John the 23rd was elevated in November of 58. He was known as the patriarch of what city? Tell me the answer, and you win $1,000. Venice. Venice. Patriarch of Venice. I don't know what you can argue about that. That's right, you won $1,000. <laughs> What are you going to do with the money? Well, I'll probably turn it over to my wife. <laughs> Congratulations and thanks for being with us. You bet your life. Remember, your DeSoto dealer sells two great cars. The outstanding 170 horsepower DeSoto Fire Dome V8 and the beautiful 54 Plymouth. America's best buy low price car. DeSoto Plymouth. Both products of the Chrysler Corporation. Friends, go in to see your DeSoto Plymouth dealer tomorrow. And when you do, tell them Groucho sent you. Be sure to tune in next week, same time, same station, for Groucho Marx in You Bet Your Life. Brought to you by your DeSoto Plymouth dealer. And don't forget to listen to You Bet Your Life every Wednesday night on radio.
This is George Penniman signing off with a reminder from the National Safety Council. September is Child Safety Month. So parents, teach them to cross at corners, obey signals, and look before crossing.